Adams Lee with the SCCT First Committee and today we're going to show you how to use the Resolution MD software by Calgary Scientific to learn to manipulate a 3D data set with a coronary CTA. By now you should have gotten the login information and gotten to this initial page. We'll have you click the Resolution MD HTML client to start and hit the launch button. After the software loads under the patient name box, I would like you to put an asterisk and hit search. And you'll see the entire case series come up. Let's select case 12. Double click case 12 to open it up, and you'll see on the bottom as the number of slices begin loading into the viewer. The first thing we're going to do is take a look at the volume rendered images to get a sense of what the 3D anatomy looks like in coronary CTA. Click the menu on the bottom left, and then click the 3D button. You'll see a 3D rendering of the heart pop up here. And if you click this manipulation tool on the left, and then click on the screen, you can manipulate around and view the entire heart. What I'd like you to do is to tip the heart on the back side and you can see the right coronary artery coming off the right cusp branching down into the distal right coronary artery. You may notice there's a lot of soft tissue getting in the way of your visualization so click the window button click and drag to the left to remove some of that soft tissue for visualization and then click the magnifying glass to view a little more closely. And as you pan across, you can get a good sense of how the coronary artery anatomy lies in comparison to the other cardiac structures. In particular, I'd like to bring your attention here to the left coronary system. And you have the left main coronary artery up here, branching into the left anterior descending, going down the, the anterior wall. And here you have the left circumflex artery going down the uh, AV groove. You'll notice that the left circumflex right under the bifurcation is typically protected right under the left atrial appendage here. Now that we have a sense of how the coronary anatomy lays, click this bottom menu again and click the MIP slash MPR button. Here on the left you'll see three different orthogonal views where you can view the coronary arteries and then the main screen where everything is a little more blown up and large if you need to see it. The first thing I'd like you to do is to click the scroll button Click in the screen and go up and down the data set and get a sense of what everything looks like. And you can see here that the right coronary artery is coming off that right cusp and then bifurcating distally into a very good sized PDA inferiorly, a posterior lateral branch. And then if we turn our attention to the left system, you notice there's a fairly early bifurcation going into the LAD up here, throwing off diagonal branches down to the right, and then the distal LAD is a quite diminutive vessel with large distal diagonal branches here. And then down here below you see the left circumflex coronary artery as it goes down the AV groove into the obtuse marginal branches here on the right side here. Now if this was a dominant left circumflex distribution, you would continue to see the distal circumflex curse around here and then go down to a left PDA. What I like to do is I like to screen after the quick screen of the coronary arteries, go up and down to the aortic vasculature to make sure that there's no major areas of plaque or dissection that you'll need to pay attention during the analysis. I do notice right away that the ascending aorta seems to be a little dilated, so we'll have to pay some attention to that later. I also do note what appears to be a mechanical prosthesis in the aortic valve position. But otherwise, the scan quality seems good. There's good opacification of the LV, aorta, and coronary arteries. Good washout in the right ventricle, but not completely washout, so you can still visualize some of the internal anatomy. And then 
I also do scan the lung fields for pulmonary nodules and other extra cardiac findings, but as you can see, this is a cone down view, and we do not have the full visualization here, so we won't do that today. I also do like to pay some initial attention to the pericardium. You can see here it's centered between the epicardial and the pericardial fat, and it seems to be a very thin pericardium without calcifications. Now that we go and are satisfied with all the cardiac structures and the pericardial space, let's take a look at the coronary arteries. The first thing I'd like you to do is to go to this windowing tool, click and widen the window, and make it a little easier to distinguish the metallic artifacts, bone, calcium, and the contrast. From here, you can see that the coronary arteries can become a little more apparent and are very separated from the mechanical valve that we saw earlier. What I'd like you to do now is click this menu in the bottom left. From here, click this thick slab button. What this button does is create a maximum intensity projection, meaning that under a number of slices are squished together into one plane, and the brightest intensity pixel of each slice is projected into that one plane. Because the coronary artery anatomy is typically going to be the highest opacified and most intense object in any plane because of the contrast in there, this will oftentimes bring out the coronary arteries nicely. So go down to where you see this plus and the minus, you see this 10 millimeters. This means we have a whole centimeters worth of data in one plane. When I evaluate a coronary artery data set, I typically like to use an initial three and a half to five centimeters uh, to visualize things a little better. So here, if you click down in this And this minus button here, you can decrease the slice thickness, and we'll go for about four millimeters right now. And if you go back to your scrolling tool, take another look at the coronary arteries. And here now you can see that things are a little easier to visualize as the coronary arteries pop out at you a little more. And so if we go down to the inferior wall here, where we see the PDA coming out, Go ahead and click on the, uh, the button to make the slices thicker. And you can see how the thicker slices really bring out the coronary arteries in the one plane and make things easier to visualize as you just scan up and down. So go back down to the, the lower slice thickness here of about four millimeters. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to learn to vessel walk. So vessel walking means we're going to use double oblique planes, meaning planes in two dimensions to lay out the coronary arteries and visualize them a little more clearly. So if you turn your attention to the boxes on the left, you see the green, blue and red boxes, and those correspond to the cross-hashed planes that you see here. So if you take this, the green and the blue, and we move down to the very center of this left main corner, or if you click and drag, and then I'm going to double click this middle plane so you can see a little more clearly that as you pan up and down, you can see that left main coronary artery being brought out. So as you're aligned with the coronary artery, you can grab this hash bar and turn it to ensure you're lined up exactly with the artery length here. And then in this other projection, you can continue to manipulate up and down. Double click here in the top box to see a different view, or here in the bottom, and then watch the effects as you pivot around this spot. 
and you're able to really see the coronary artery that we're bringing out here in this segment. And then you can even click and drag and go further down the coronary artery. Turn so you have a different view. And really continue to walk your way up and down that vessel. So this is one of the powerful tools we use in cardiac CT to evaluate coronary artery stenosis. Although you do need to be need to be careful when using a MIP when there's calcification because calcification will typically be brighter than the contrast and will obscure the lumen and make things look more stenotic than they really are.